G'day everybody and welcome to another episode of Automotive Carnage. You've been asking for it, so we're finally doing it. We're going to be working on the Cressida. That's right, since I got back from my holiday with my wonderful family, this is the first time I've actually had a chance to put things aside and get to work on the Cressida. So, I'm looking forward to it. What are we going to do today? Well, we're going to reacquaint ourselves with what on earth I've done already to this car, because um, I've completely forgotten and I'm sure I've lost bolts and bits and pieces and everything, so we'll find all that. Um, but what we'll actually be filming is I need to refabricate the cross member for the transmission. Uh, the one I've currently used is like, the steel is way too thick, the welds are crappy, um, and also I didn't line up the holes correctly, so it doesn't sit the nicest, and the gearbox is slightly askew um, when it's all bolted up. If you can bolt it up, because the bolt holes don't line up properly. So, we've got some smaller, more uh, suited angle iron, so we're going to use that to make a new cross member. Uh, so we'll do that so we can position the engine nicely, that way our angles are set for our, um, like I've forgotten all the terminology now, pinion angle? No, that's at the diff end. But you know, I've got to make sure the engine is like so many degrees this way, so the pinion on the diff, the new Hilux diff is so many degrees the other way. Anyway, that's all maths I've got to reacquaint myself with. So get the transmission sitting nicely where it needs to be. Uh, then we're going to look at fabricating up a mount for the PCM. Uh, and that's going to sit in... Where it would normally be in a Falcon um, is over here, and that's exactly where we're going to put it. Um, when I got Bill to make up the loom for me, um, I'm like, pretty much make it where it all normally sits, and I can work out um, a fabrication from that point. Uh, as you know, we've already got the battery located over here. Um, he's made a custom fuse box as well, so we can get rid of that big, ugly um, factory unit. So that frees up a lot of space in the engine bay and gets rid of so many unnecessary wires, fuses, and relays. Um, so yeah, engine, the battery tray is fabricated already. We need to fabricate the PCM. So then we can mount the PCM and start running wires and all that kind of stuff. Whether we'll do that today, I'm not sure. Uh, we need to mount the fuse box if we get time to do that. And then the other thing I really love to do is fabricate up the cooling system, uh, the mounts for the radiator. Um, if I remember correctly, we have to be able, we have to move it forward a little bit because the fan fails on this plug right here. So we'll revisit that issue. Uh, we might have to cut a bit more metal out, which looks like I've already done that. So, all right, we'll get into that. Um, and then, yeah, so hopefully we can get a cooling system uh, mounted and ready to be fanned up as well. Now, uh, the reason we're not doing the diff is because I'm waiting for a 76 millimeter hole saw to arrive in the mail. That way I can get a perfect radius um, for the new diff mounts. I do have the steel we need uh, sitting down here. Um, so we'll go over the plan on what's going to happen there. I think that's the plan for today. So let's get into that. Let's get underneath the car and fix the cross member first. All right, so this is what I'm talking about, about my cross member here. Um, the plate that I've used is way too thick and I haven't welded it hot enough. So those welds are very dodgy. Um, you can see here I've got some fuel line currently lining up the transmission to the bolt hole. And if we go over this side, you can see that bolt hole does not line up at all. So I drilled that in the wrong spot. Um, yeah, just real dodgy welding on here. So we're going to take this one out and make one a bit smaller um, and more appropriate to what we need to do. So let's do that. Yes. All right, so here is our big monster uh, cross member out of the car that is useless to us. We will use it for some rough measurements so that we can cut a bit of a starting point from our new angle iron. Uh, I'm just gonna copy the design, same as I did there, but just make ours a much more appropriately sized angle iron. Now, also, on a side topic, we have bits and pieces here. Uh, you remember, uh, not last week, or the week before, I went and picked up two RB30 engines from a friend's yard. Well, that's one of them being pulled apart. And this is the other one. So this one, 
was lying in the front yard on a tire. Um, so I'm like, okay, it's on a tire, so it must be, you know, looked after. And sure enough, the, you probably can't see because it's shadow, but you can still see the hoe marks on the balls from where this engine's been rebuilt. Um, it's got ACL bearings in it. Um, it's quite a good little unit. Full of gunked up oil though. That's no good. That needs to be really cleaned up. Um, there's the head. For what I plan on doing with this engine, I don't need this head if you catch my drift. Um, the block is overall in good condition. It is a Series 2. We have the bungs there that we need to turbocharge it. Um, yeah, it's in really good condition. But I'll still get sent off to an engine uh, reconditioner because all the oil water galleries are rusted out, exposed, and there's rodent um, crap all inside as well. So there's a good um, acid bath, that one. Uh, the other one that these pistons came out of, eh, not so good. It's a Series 1 block, so it doesn't have all the drain plugs on it, which is unfortunate. Um, and the pist one of the bores, uh, number 6, uh, was really pitted and rusted. So we'll still take it down to get acid dipped and cleaned out and see if we can save it. Um, because if we have two blocks, well, two blocks is better than one block, so that's cool. So that's where the RB30s are at at the moment. What car they're going into, I have no idea. Anyway, let's start fabricating something out of this angle line. <laughs> You know, I was just measuring out the space between these bolt holes, as you saw, and I just remembered something. I need to change the rear of this uh, transmission, because I need to change it to a ELEF style, so that it's got the speed sensor for the PCM. So, I better swap that out before I make a cross member, in case these mounts are in a different position. I'm glad I of that now before I made it. So um, I'll pull the engine and trans back out and we'll go bush and we'll go find ourselves a, um, I don't know what this part is, the rear of the transmission anyway, whatever you call this bit. Um, I do know where there is one um, because the blind man flipped over for me. <laughs> if you remember that one, we got him to flip a car. Um, yeah, so let's head out bush now and try to take that off. We need that part. Okay, so here we are out in the wonderful bush again. Uh, we have here in front of us an ELEF Falcon, not too sure which one it is. And what we are after is the rear of the transmission. Now, this vehicle was flipped over by Jason the Blind Man, and then we invented Outback Drag Racing with it, and we dragged it from way over there somewhere to here before the clutch on that started burning out, so we thought we'd better stop. Anyway, uh, let's climb up here, and hopefully we have the bits that we need. So, we don't need that. Actually, we might need that. Um, here we go, this part here. So, yep, as I suspected, it does have a slightly different kind of mount. Um, not too dissimilar though, um, so we'll get that off and then hopefully we can see all the bolts to pull off the rear. This looks different. Okay, let's just pull it apart, see what happens. Okay, so we've gone as far as we can with the car this way up. Um, turns out the bolts, uh, there's two more at the top of the transmission. Um, so to get to those, we're going to have to flip the car over again and then cut out that section from inside. Uh, as opposed to trying to take out the whole transmission uh, by myself, which is not too easy. So I've only got a short um, snatch strap, unfortunately, so I'm not sure how well this is going to go, but uh, let's give it a crack, see what happens. This may not work at all. We'll try again.
Nah, we're just gonna keep spinning it around. Okay, so as you saw, that attempt didn't work too well. So we've gone back, we've got a stronger, or longer uh, tie down, tie rope. So now we can flip it over properly. This door is gonna be a real pain in the butt. Can we close it a little? Oh, here we go. There we go. That's not gonna be so much of a pain now. All right, come on. All right. Now let's flip it over and see what happens. Oh, you're kidding me. Why is this car so hard to flip? And how do we just snap a blooming strop? <sighs> All it wants one part. I don't think that part's gonna work anymore. All right. Let's try something else. Let's go around the A pillar instead of the B. It might be that now with the diff gone, the balance isn't right, and so there's too much weight from the engine and trans, and there's no weight from the diff being not being there. So we'll wrap this around the A pillar, change the point at which it's flipping, and that might be the trick. I noticed every time we do it, it's pulling the rear of the car around. All right, let's try this. Here we go. Aha! Take that! Oh man! Never had so much trouble trying to flip a car before. Oh, let's get in and cut out what we need. Alright, here we are. We're standing in the Ford's uh, front windscreen. We've created ourselves a nice little hole here. Um, the shift is over that way somewhere now. Stuff that. Um, undone all the bolts, so now hopefully we should be able to just pull on this. Like that. Come on. Come on. Oh, okay, you're going to be difficult, aren't you? Come on. Oh dear. Oh, oh, come on. Don't make me flip this car again. Hmm, okay. Well, that's irritating. We're going to flip the car again, aren't we? Hey. Yep, so we end up on this lid again. Like I said, I wouldn't do, but... Oh my gosh, what a nightmare that was. So anyway, we have our rear casing. We have our speed sensor and the cog. Unfortunately, I lost the little pin that holds that cog in place, so we'll have to make something work there. Well, let's go home and see if this bolt pattern is the same as the bolt pattern on our BA. I don't think it is, but we'll soon find out. All right, see you back in the shed. So you know how we just spent ages trying to get this out? And that's about how much it's worth to us. It turns out that the G220 and the B8 has a completely different kind of transmission to all the other Falcons. And so while well, the EL rear housing part is held on by four bolts, uh, the one for this transmission that we're running is held on by 10 bolts. Uh, it's also longer than that one. So there's no direct replacement for it. Uh, this transmission is all on its own and there's no likewise transmission that runs the speed sensor. Cool, well that was about an hour of my life wasted.
anyway, I hope it was entertaining for you lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the cross member in for this transmission and um, we're going to run the speed sensor off the diff, um, the pinion, where the drive shaft mounts onto the diff. Um, we'll have to make a custom one up for, for that and that's where we'll get our speed sensor signal from. So that's unfortunately going to be a brand new part because it has to be custom made for our Hilux diff. So I'm sick of working, looking at transmissions, so I'm not going to build that cross member just yet. We are going to build the mounts for this and it's plugged in currently still. So um, I've made like a little frame for the PCM. And so now we're just going to weld um, tabs in the engine bay and that's going to bolt to that job done PCM mounted. Uh, I've marked out where we need to cut for the cooling system. We'll get to that later. Let's just get some work done. Ah. And there we go, PCM has been mounted. Ah, this is excellent. Um, now how many, I could hear you screaming in the comments, don't forget to cut that off. I heard you, cut it off. Anyway, um, probably should have made like a full on frame for this instead of using the actual PCM as a stress member. But there's a bit of flex in there, bit of rubber insulation on there. So, hey, she'll be good until she breaks. And then it's a couple hundred bucks to replace it. But anyway, that's mounted, that's awesome. Uh, that cable, should reach emphasis on should yep plugs in and then there's room there to plug the other lot on that's great so now we move on to cooling system you can see oh, block that starting out you can see my white marks there where i have to cut out the sheet metal to allow more room for the radiator to fit same on that side and then and there we got a big x where we have to hit it just so that that chassis rail is not rubbing on the bottom hose that comes out the radiator, comes out there, under there, into there. And it's because of that radiator hose that we have to cut so much metal out. We also have to trim these little um, step offs or mounting points off as well, um, so that we can just get more space between this pulley system, the lower uh, pipe, and the actual radiator itself. So it's a bit of a, a lot going on in this area, but we can make it work once we cut all that out. So, let's cut that out. was easier than anticipated. I um, probably didn't need to cut so much off on this side, but that's all right. That's still structurally sound. Uh, that side there needs a bit of a tack just to hold that back in place, but that's okay. We've got all this room in here now. Um, like, look at the cooling on that. That whole core is exposed, which is absolutely fantastic. And there's not that much grill and bar work that needs to cover it. So cooling shouldn't be an issue. Uh, this top hose here is a bit kink, so we'll just chop a little bit off of there, and that will just straighten things out in that department. Down here, hopefully there's still enough light to see. No, there isn't. Oh, there we go. So you can see the fan here uh, was hitting on that sensor. But now, we've got plenty of room down there. And I'm not sure if you can see all the way down in there, but that bottom radiator hose now will have enough room to go on and be able to be tightened up. So... Now it's getting a bit dark, but we'll carry on. Um, we need to find a way of actually mounting 
the radiator securely. So I need to find some rubber bungs to do that. So here we are, we're back out bush again on the hunt for parts. Uh, we're at the rubbish dump, which is exactly where we did the live uh, feed from. And there's actually a car here I forgot to show you guys, which is really cool. Um, so I'll get to that soon. But why we're here is for this Kia Carnival, because in the front here, there's very easy access to the little rubber mounts. Look at that, they just fall out. Good size. We could use those, thank you very much, uh, to mount up our radiator. So that's great, we'll just cut a hole big enough to fit that in. Our radiator slots into there, job done. So anyway, this car I'm currently standing on is a Ford Fairlane. And what makes this one so interesting, you got the lever interior in there, wood grain steering wheel. Oh, come on, open up. Somewhere in here. Oh. Yep, we still have the 302 Windsor in there. Pretty complete. It's covered in oil because this car was upside down for quite a long time. But the awesome thing is, I know for a fact that that engine still runs because it crashed into my friend's front yard. <laughs> uh, a couple of guys were a bit drunk and um, their, what was it, their, their drunkenness overseeded their, their skill or whatever. Anyway, they crashed into the fence and gapped it. So uh, my mate got a bit peeved off by that. So he got his big front end loader and just took it out here to the dump. Cool story. Um, so there's that, oh, hello. And there's also this. Can we take these? Oh, here we go. These are a different size. The more options, the better. Stick those in the pocket. All right, back to the shed. And let's go see which ones fit our radiator the best. That was easy. A lot easier than flipping that damn car. Well, that got dark very quickly. Anyway, I kind of got into a little bit of a fabrication sprint there and um, kind of just smashed out heaps of getting that radiator to fit in this big hole. It looks like a big hole, but it actually isn't that big. So we've drilled out holes where our little rubber bungs are going to go. So they fit nicely. Well, not so much this one. This one's a bit hard to get in. Oh, there we go. Oops, sorry. Pointing in the wrong direction there. So that's that one in. And then over this side, we got one there as well. So nice little hole there. Bung in the bung. Right. And now we bring in the radiator. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Don't drop it. Don't have another one. So you gotta get that end in first. And then that end swings around, comes in, and then we go down like that. All right, and position them in place like that. Yep, that's that side then. And this one's a bit all over the show. Come on, there we go. So that is the radiator in place with its bottom bunks, which is really, really good. But it still flops around quite a bit due to not having any support up here. So we have our little crossbar here that goes across the uh, top of the radiator support panel. And on this side, we've mounted up a little L bracket here. Um, where's our rubber bung for that one? Oh gosh, now I've lost it. Oh, there it is. All right, so this one here, I think this one was from the Kia, these ones. Um, that's not the right one because I made a little custom, oh no, where have I put it? Oh me, I shaped the other one to fit nicely in to there. There it is, on the ground. Anyway, I'm not sure how it got there, anyway. And so then this one, this is all very hard to do with one hand. Here, I'll put you under my arm, there, there we go. So then that goes in there like that. That goes on top like that. Whack that into place. Get a bolt. Oop, oh, you're pointing the wrong way. Whack that into there. 10 mil spanner. Tighten that up. Yeah. And there we go. That moves a lot less. So that's really cool. So all we're gonna do now is make one of those for over on this side, because um, that still flops around a bit and it's gonna 
fell up in there a little bit. Um, so I'll fab that up. And then that is the cooling system mounted in place. So I'm really chuffed about that. Um, that was way easier than I was anticipating. I thought I have to make like little stands for down the bottom and everything, but um, just drilled a couple of holes, whacked those bungs in there, job done. So um, yeah, I think, I'll, I think I'll do this for this episode. It's been a long one, it's been an interesting one. So we'll, um, uh, we'll I'll finish fabbing up the radio support there. I'll make a cross member off camera just so I can get that done. Um, Cause this has taken me three days already uh, in and around full-time work. So that's why it keeps going dark and my clothes keep changing and I get various degrees of dirty. So it feels really good to actually get some work done on the Cressida and finish off that cooling system. Uh, we'll have to cut the hoses down a little bit too, if I remember correctly. So just little things I remember as I talk about stuff completely unrelated. Cooling system, mounted, done, awesome. Um, yeah, we've got work done on the Cressida, which is fantastic. So, oh my God, I just realized I just keep rambling and rambling and rambling. All I need to say is thank you for watching All of Carnage. Hope to see you on the next episode. And what are we doing? Probably more fabrication work or we could get the engine running in the HR wagon. Let us know. Should we do some more fabrication work or play with the HR? Anyway, see you guys later.